welcome, feel comfortable at the feet of Jesus. Thank you very much. Happy Sabbath again. As we continue the worship this morning, it's a time for us to have a word of prayer. May I then request each one of us who are within the sanctuary here, if you have uh, enough space, we can all kneel. And I would also like to invite those who are joining us virtually, wherever they are, you can stand up and join us as we have a word of prayer, wherever you are. Let's pray. Kind and loving Heavenly Father, we come before thee this morning with thanksgiving with praises and with honor for you, who you are to us. Indeed, it's been a blessing that we've seen this day and been able to join together with you and with many of us to commune with you and with one another. Let this be a blessing in our lives and a reflection of your desire to us each day. We come before thee not because we are perfect, but we are sinful people. We ask that you continue to be with us, to continue to forgive us, but more so make us be people who are willing to confess our sins and to seek for your forgiveness each time. Let thy spirit come in our hearts and prod us, and let the spirit not give us peace until we yield to your beckoning, so that indeed we can be your children and reconciled to you so that we can enjoy eternity when the time comes. We've come before thee with many challenges. Some have had problems of sickness. Some are not having jobs. Some may be missing meals. Some may be faced with problems that we cannot be able to describe. There are those who are also in hospital who may have not been able to come here. But we leave it unto you that indeed you know each person's desire, each person's need, and you'll be able to meet them at the right time, the right place, wherever they are. Continue to walk with us and to journey with us so that we can be able to know you and to serve you in a way that pleases you, and not the way we want. For we know we've fallen short of your glory and are not worthy to present ourselves before thee. Continue to guide the worship service that we have this morning, but more so the speaker that you've anointed this hour to come and speak to us. Deliver your message to your children, Pastor Ezra Kenyanya. We ask that you give him the wisdom, give him the words, more so enable him to be able to share it in the way you desire. Let you have the chance to speak through him and not him to speak to us. Enable us to adore thee and to know you, more so to reflect on your words and your scripture so that we can be a people who are changed for your purpose, but more so for us to be able to reach out to others so that indeed they can be able to know you and be prepared for the soon return of your son Jesus Christ. We thank you for having offered him at Calvary for our sake and indeed we know and do trust that he is working together with you to enable us to reconcile with you out of this sinful world. Be with us each day and forevermore, for we ask all this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen.
Happy Sabbath once more. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Uh, it is another time that uh, again we want to worship our Lord and Savior through our tithes and offering. As I read a verse, uh, let, allow me to request our deacons and deaconesses to take positions, to take their positions so that they can uh, preside over this uh, worship. Uh, those who are joining us virtually, you may make your contribution through various church platform, Mpesa, Airtel Money, or through the bank account, and that is also extended to those here in church. You can give physical through the envelope indicating uh, the category uh, on which you are giving your offering. Then if you are doing, you can also do through other um, uh, platform. We are reading from the book of Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 7 but just as you excel in everything in faith in speech in knowledge in complete earnestness and in your love for us see that you also excel in the grace of giving let us pray our Heavenly Father, it is another time that we want to worship you through our tithe and offering. Father, accept our worship and above all, allow us to give you and surrender our hearts to you. For this is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
happy sabbath happy sabbath happy day so it's time for the children's sermon happy sabbath children happy day happy sabbath ah this month we have a new class on stage which class is this ah junior class ages 10 and 11 all right huh now since it's a new month that means we have a new theme right what is the theme for this month children lessons from the sheep huh okay that's confusing Why are we learning about sheep? Why should we learn about animals? And we have a lot of stories in the Bible. You're also wondering the same thing, right? Okay. But we are going to get some lessons today. So welcome children in church, children on YouTube and Facebook and at homes to our children someone today. So before we begin, I'd like one of the children to pray with us. Yes, Valencia. Let's pray. Thank you God for this day and as we are going to start learning guide us and protect us and help us learn more about sheep. In Jesus name I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now, before we begin, I'd like children to tell me some facts you know about sheep. What do you know about sheep? Ah, okay. That's interesting. That's interesting. Uh-huh. Someone else? Yes. They give us wool. They give us wool. Uh-huh. Sheep are humble. Sheep are humble, okay? One last person. What else do you know about sheep? Yes. Sheep have good memory. Sheep have good memories. Okay, that's impressive. Now, let me give you guys some facts I know about sheep. Now, This might come as a surprise to most of you, even the parents, but did you guys know that sheep have rectangular eyes? Look at your neighbor. What shape is their eye? It's a circle, right? But sheep have rectangular eyes. Something else you do not know about sheep is that sheep have very good memories. Do you guys know that? Sheep can remember up to 50 faces of their fellow sheep all right and also sheep know how to recognize human emotion sheep can tell when their shepherd is angry or when the shepherd is smiling and it is said that sheep prefer people who are smiling can you smile kids yes there we go <laughs> all right final fact about sheep this was something done in the olden times our grandfathers and great grandfathers Now, they used sheep to treat certain diseases. For example, if you got bit by a snake, they take the fat from a sheep and apply it to that area where the snake bit you and that will help remove the poison. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Now, final fact about sheep, you guys do not know. Do you know that sheep are doctors? I see those looks. Sheep are actually doctors. Sheep know which plants to eat when they're feeling sick. There are some certain herbs sheep eat so that they know uh, in case they are having a stomach ache. They eat those herbs so that they can feel better. Now, why are we learning about sheep children? Someone open the book of Psalm chapter 100 verse 3. Psalm 100 verse 3. Yes. and it says know that the lord he is god it is he who has made us and not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pasture thank you so the bible says that we are god's sheep so the bible calls us sheep how many are sheep here yes we are all god's sheep because the bible says so all right now The second lesson we learn from sheep is that sheep are humble. Okay? Sheep are what? Sheep are very humble. 
It is actually uh, said in the Bible that sheep are the most meek of animals. Meek is another word for humble, all right? Now, the third lesson we learn from sheep is that sheep are very obedient and they listen to their master. Now, if we are all sheep, who is our shepherd? Yes. God. God is our shepherd, okay? And as we have read from Psalm 100 verse 3, God calls us his sheep, and obedient sheep listen to the shepherd's voice. Now, in the olden days, what used to happen is when a shepherd was leading his flock of sheep, he usually walked ahead of the sheep. Why do you think he walked ahead of the sheep? Hmm. Yes. To lead the sheep. To lead the sheep. Uh-huh. I saw another hand. So he could show them where to go. So he could show them where to go. Yes. Also, the shepherd walked in front of the sheep so that he could clear the way for any dangers that the sheep would face. And also, did you know, as we said before, that sheep have very good memory, right? Sheep know their shepherd's voice. So if the shepherd said, my sheep, follow me, all the sheep will come out and follow him, all right? So those are the three lessons we learn from sheep today. Next Sabbath, we are going to learn about how we are God's sheep and God is our shepherd, all right? Now, questions. What shape did we say are the eyes of sheep? What shape? Someone knows in spoken. Yes. Rectangular. Rectangular. Thank you. <clears throat> Second question. How many faces did we say a sheep can remember? How many faces? Yes. Fifty. Up to fifty faces. Final thing. What is our theme for this month? What is our theme for this month, children? I see so many hands. I see so many hands. Yes. Lessons from sheep. Lessons from the sheep. Thank you so much, children, for listening to our children's sermon today. Now we'll rise up. I'll ask someone to pray with us as we close. Yes. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Ken eleven Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for our parents and our teachers. We thank you for the lesson that we have learned today. And please help us to be like sheep. And for anything that I have not prayed for, may the Holy Spirit intercede in the name of Jesus Christ to pray. Amen. For now, children, what do we say to the other children? Bye. Happy Sabbath, church. Happy day indeed it is. Um, our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15 and we are reading verse 1. And it says, After these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield, and thy exceeding great reward. I'll repeat Genesis 15 verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. May the Lord bless his word. May we kindly rise with our opening song. We are going to sing song number 86, How Great Thou Art. Song number 86. May we rise, Chuck?
my Savior gone to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest plants I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When Precious Father in heaven, we thank you so much this Sabbath morning. Indeed, great thou art. We assemble here to worship you, Lord, and we pray that your presence will be experienced and felt in this congregation today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath. The Lord is good. And all the time, we praise God for this beautiful Sabbath morning. We want to thank you all for coming today again for worship. I'm here to bring to us the speaker for the hour. Our speaker today is Pastor Ezra Kenyanya. And Ezra Kenyanya is not new to us. He's your son in this church. Uh, because a um, few years ago, uh, he took one of your youth from this church. And who happened to be your church clerk? Our sister Beryl Jemima was our church clerk in the year 2015-2016. And pastor came and snatched her. And from that time, we have not seen her come back. But today, she's here with her husband. But she decided to sit. You will have time, those could be relatives and those she ministered to and for church clerk, you will have time to greet her. They are currently serving um, in the Kenyan Community Church in Minnesota, in USA. And uh, they are my friends. We are good friends. And when I learned they are coming over for the holiday, I requested the pastor to come and speak to us. May you pray for him as ministers to us today. 
Pastor was welcome. Thank you, man. Amen. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Are you sure? Are you sure, church? All right, say it like you're sure. God is good. And all the time. And that is his nature. Amen and amen and amen. It is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. And I just want to take this chance to thank the Lord for allowing us to fellowship and worship together. And I'd like to take this chance to say thank you to pastor, to the leadership, to everyone who has allowed us to be able to minister with you, to share with you, and to be blessed by you and with you. It is my prayer that the Lord will speak to us and through us, and all, when all is said and done, all glory and honor will be given to him. I want to ask you to turn to your neighbor and say, feel at the house of the Lord. Say that to your neighbor. Those of you who are joining us live, YouTube, Facebook, KBC, if you have a neighbor, if you don't, tell yourself, let me feel at the house of the Lord. I say that because I would have said feel at home, but I don't know how your homes are. So it's safer and better to say feel at the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I don't want to take much time. I'd like to invite you all to bow with me as we take time to seek and search the word of the Lord as he speaks to us. Kindly bow with me as we have a word. Father God. This time will fail to be divine if you don't descend and spend your time with us. So it is my prayer, my plea, my ask, my cry. The Lord, not only will you come down in unity, but come as God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lift our souls, heal the brokenhearted, give us peace that surpasses all understanding, and above all, transform us that we may resemble to the character and the life of Christ. Speak to us now and through us, Lord, for we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The title of the sermon this morning is titled, God is enough. As a matter of fact, let me reframe that. It is a question that I'm posing and asking to you all, is God enough? I ask this question because many a times we presume and assume that God is enough until when the news, uh, the phone rings, you pick up the phone and the voice and the sound on the other side uh, gives you some news that you are not able to bear. And at that moment you pause and ask yourself, where were you? Where are you God? The year is 2004, the month is February, the date is 27th. The time is around 10 p.m. I have left work and I'm driving home with my colleagues, my friends. And just before I had to say I wasn't driving, I was seated behind. And just before I said a word of prayer, the next thing I heard is our, our car ram into a tree. And as I lifted my head up and I looked, I saw smoke coming from the, 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 the hood of the car. And I paused for a second and re I realized this car might explode any time. So out of the car I jumped. Five of us seated in the car and I started pulling everyone out. The ambulances, the siren, everybody's gathered around the scene and we are all taken to the hospital. Except for me. A few minutes later, after everyone is gone, I fall down and I feel a sharp pain on my neck. Little did I know that I had just begun my journey for the next six months where I was going to be bedridden for six months. As the doctors were attending to me, lying down, my father had arrived, my mother had arrived at the scene at the hospital. I looked at my father and for the first time I saw tears rolling in his eyes and I knew that this is serious. As the doctor spoke in their language that I could not understand, they said he had fractured the C7, C1, I could not understand what it was. The only thing I could say is why me? Why me? Why me Lord? Now no, notice this. Even that song alone was suspect, for those of you who know it. And at that moment, I asked myself, I said, Lord, if you save me from this, I will give my all and I will serve you. 
But you see, at that very moment, I asked myself a question. Where were you when this was happening, Lord? Why did you allow it to happen? And I'm sure that there's somebody who came here this morning and their heart is heavy because of the situation at home. I am sure that there's somebody who's gathered here this morning whose account is not resembling what the desires of their hearts will be. I am sure that there's a marriage right now that is, 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 is on the verge of breaking. And someone is saying, Lord, I prayed and I fasted. Where were you? Question is, in those moments, is God in our Father God as we open the scriptures speak to us in Jesus name I invite you to Genesis chapter 1 what did I say Genesis chapter 1 if you're there say amen if you're not there say have mercy we'll wait for you because we're in the house of the Lord amen Genesis chapter 1 the Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth in the beginning the greatest question ever asked in the world is who is God you might not even realize yourself but how you live your life how you experience your emotions how you spend your time your efforts at, at the core of it you are beckoning and asking yourself who is God but you see God does not leave us without answering that question you might not fully comprehend and understand who God is but when God was authoring the Bible, he decided that he is going to give us the summary of the entire Bible in the very first text of the Bible. He says, in the beginning. What? God. In the beginning of your marriage, God. In the beginning of your sickness, God. In the beginning of your financial crisis, God in the beginning of your leadership God in the beginning of your ministry God in the beginning in other words when God says in the beginning the first thing he introduces is not the resources that you have it is not the the power and authority that you have it's not the eloquence that you have in the beginning who God you see when you started falling sick God was there you see, when you lost your only child that you had, God was there. You see, when you woke up this morning, when you opened your eyes, the first thing, the first person who was there is who? God. When God is writing the Bible, he is very intentional that as good Adventists, when you say in the beginning, you don't say prophecy. Hello church, are we together? That when you say in the beginning, you don't say the seventh day Adventist. That when you say in the beginning, you, say, you don't say the 28 fundamental beliefs. Because if God steps out of the 28 fundamental beliefs, then they all are no longer important. In the beginning, God. But here's the question. Do you really know this God? If you understand that in the beginning it's God, do you really know this God? The Bible tells me in the book of Exodus chapter, five, chapter, chapter 3 as that when God showed up to, uh, to Moses in form of a burning bush, he said, I want to send you. And Moses turned around and he said, if they ask me who sent me. I want you to understand young people who are seated here this morning as that Moses had gone through adventurers, as that Moses had gone through Pathfinder, as that Moses had gone through the ambassadors club, as that Moses had gone through the youth ministry, but when he came face to face with God, he did not know who God was. May I submit to you elders who are gathered here, leaders who are gathered here, that when you come to the book of Exodus uh, chapter 5, when Moses and Aaron arrive at the feet at the house of Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh tells them, what do you want? And they say, God has sent us. Uh, Pharaoh responds and says, who is God? I want you to understand that the Seventh-day Adventist, the Christian in Moses, asked the question, who is is God. Uh, Pharaoh, the atheist, uh, the worshippers of the idols of the world, uh, turned to Moses and says, who is God? I invite you to the book of Matthew chapter 16 as Jesus is gathered with his disciples and he turns and he looks at them and he says, who do the people say I am? And the disciples, they say, some they say you're Jeremiah, others say that you're Elijah, but then Jesus pauses and he looks at them and says, but who do you say I am? The question to you all this morning, 
Who is God to you? Who is God? If you can't answer that question, then the next question of is God enough has no relevance in our discussion this morning. However, that is a question of eternity and I will not spend time there for now. So God establishes that in the beginning of your crisis, in the beginning of your blessings, in the beginning of your marriage, in the beginning of your Christian life, God was there. However, if you know and ascertain that God is enough, question that I have for you, I mean, if you ascertain that you know God, is he enough? And I'm going to use the story of Abraham to ask you that question. So I invite you all to join me to the book of Genesis chapter 15. What did I say, church? Genesis chapter 15. If you are there, you say amen. If you are not there, say have mercy. All right, we'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. And I'm reading in your hearing, the Bible says, After these things, after what? These things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. I read that again slowly and carefully because we're going to spend time there. The Bible says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham. And I'm going to pause there for a second and say this. When the Bible says the after, what does that mean? What does that, does that tell you? What does the word after mean? There was something before, right? So if you do not understand what was there before, this verse will not make sense. So as we come to Genesis chapter 15, it is important for us to understand what was it that was before that. And now when we go back to Genesis chapter 14, chapter 13, and I'm not going to take you through the entire text, but I'm going to give you a summary form so that we can dive to Genesis chapter 15. In Genesis chapter 12, Abraham has been called by God. He has been given the promises. And the Bible tells me in Genesis chapter 12, the promises, God, Abraham is told to leave his country, to leave his family, to leave his father's house, and he leaves uh, without questioning anything. As he comes to Genesis chapter 13, he settles, uh, to, to, he inherits the land of Canaan. And by the way, Abraham does not have a child. Not only does Abraham not have a child, Abraham just recently had lost his father in Genesis chapter 11. So not only is he mourning the loss of his father, he has also been called to leave his family that he knows. Not only has he left his family, he has carried along his, son, his brother's son, his brother, the late brother's son, Haran, his, uh, the, the, his son was Lot. But you see, in that culture, because Abraham, Abraham, not Abraham, Abraham at this point did not have a child of his own. Lot became like his only son that he had. Wherever he went, he introduced, he introduced Lot like his son. But just like any father, when we come to Genesis chapter 13, there is commotion that comes because of the property that they have. Just like any wise father, Abraham looks up and says, My son, there is no reason for us to strive. There is no reason for us to contend uh, and fight for land. I want to believe if Abraham was living today, probably he would have been a kiss. You know, kisses fight for land. Hallelujah, church. Amen. I'm one of them, so I'm allowed to say that. Amen. However, well, it's a human problem. It's a human problem. Let me take that back. No be tribal. I, let me take that back. It's a human problem, but it started in the biblical times. So Lot lifts his head up. He sees the greener pastures, and off he picks and goes to the greener pastures. In Genesis chapter 14, the kings of the region and the area, they come together and they decide to go for a raid. Now we are reading Genesis chapter 14 verses 13 and the Bible says this, Then one who had escaped came and told Abraham, the Hebrew, for he dwelt by the, the, uh, by the by Terebinth, uh, Terebinth, 
the trees of Mame, the Amorite brother of Eshel, the brother of Ena, and they were allies with Abraham. Now when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his 313 trained servants who were born in his own house and went in pursuit as far as Dan. I want you to mark a couple of things there. The Bible says when the information was brought to Abraham, he took how many men, if you're following me, Kinley, verses 14, how many men did he take? 318 trained servants. Now, my question is, you take 300 men against the kings of the world, of not only one nation, but several nations, of not only people who are just, uh, 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 just, just regular, you know, militia, but trained, well armed for, with, with, with resources, and you come with 300 men, and you want to go fight them. But you see the love that Abraham has for his son Lot. Even though he is outnumbered, he cannot sit down. You see the love that Abraham has. Now remember, Lot is not his biological son. I want to remind you that uh, previously, uh, this son of Abraham has started causing commotion and tension. And may I submit and suggest that there is a parent who is listening to me and understands that. May I submit and suggest that uh, they, uh, they, 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 there's a couple who seated here and they understand, they understand commotion and strife and, and, and lack of peace in their homes. Uh, may I submit and, uh, and suggest that there's somebody who understands uh, the lack of thereof of peace at their place of work. But you see the love of a father, the love that Abraham has, cannot allow him to stay still. Bible tells me he takes 300 men and he pursues them. Now listen when we come to verses 15, verses 17, uh, uh, verses 16. So he brought back all the goods and also brought back his brother Lot and his goods as well as the women. In Jesus' name he conquered the, the enemies. Verse 17, and the king of Sodom went out to meet him to the valley of Shave, that is the king's valley, after his return from the defeat of, of King Ch 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 Chaldoma and the kings who were with him. I want to paint this picture. Please follow me closely. Abraham is outnumbered. Abraham is burdened with the loss of his son. Abraham has no resources. Abraham, in his own might, cannot do anything. He goes out and he spends to the very last coin that he has. But not only does he spend everything that he has, now we come to verses 18. Then Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought out the bread and wine, and he, uh, and he was the priest of God, the Most High, and blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, the most of God most time, possessor of heaven and earth. Listen to me, church. And I want you to repeat with me. What did he say? Possessor of what? Of heaven and I am telling you, my father is the possessor of the heavens and earth. Hallelujah, church. I am telling you that my father is the possessor of everything that has been created. And blessed be God most high who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Now, now, <laughs> the next line says, and he gave tithe. He gave him a tithe of all. Abraham, you just spent everything that you had. Abraham, you didn't have resources to match these people. Abraham, how much money do you have left? And he gave him all the tithe. Now, I'm not preaching about tithe and offering. Sometimes people get jittery about that. Allow me to make, the, make this analogy. The year is 2012. We had gone to North to, to Pocot for a mission. We get there very late at night. And early in the morning, there's a lady who's approximately 70-something years old. She's blind. She hears of the news of these people who have come to preach the gospel in Pokot. And she takes the hand of a young child and says, Please take me to the entire city of Koloa and find the men of God who have come to preach the word. 
And as she's led, we get the news and she, we see this woman walking towards us. And we're with this with Pastor called Pastor Rotich. And she says, Pastor, and as she's shaking Pastor Rotich, she, Pastor Rotich hears her, and he hears something in his hand. Pastor Rotich, as he opens his hand, he finds 720 shillings in his hand. He said, Mama, what is this for? She said, you see, three years ago, some missionaries came here. And when these missionaries came here, and they preached the gospel. And I, I did not understand everything then. And I started reading the Bible, and I realized that I needed to give my tithes an offering. You see, for those three years, we did not have a church here. For those three years, we did not have a pastor here. But I have been putting my money faithfully until the day the Lord shall send his people. What do you say, church, to this woman? Now, let me tell you something about this woman. When we arrived in Pokot, there was a drought that was going on. Actually, as a matter of fact, there is a neighbor there whose granddaughter had seen that her grandmother was going to die. She took a cart and skinned the cart and boiled the cart and fed the grandmother the cart so that she does not be able to die. And here is a faithful woman who is dying from hunger, who has the ability to buy food, but who is faithful to God that may the hunger of this world kill me because I have known my life. This is Abraham. He has nothing. He has lost everything. He is in a quagmire. He is in a situation. He understands that all that I have is gone. And he comes and he says, Lord, here is what belongs to you. Now the Bible goes on to say in verses 21, Now the king of Sodom said to Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord, the God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth. That I will take nothing from, from, from a thread to a sandal strap. And that I will not make anything that is, I will not take anything that is yours. Lest you say I have made Abraham rich except only that the young men have eaten now we come to our key text today of genesis chapter 15 verses 1 and now the bible says after these things let's unpack that as we answer ask the question is god enough now after all this abraham is broke after all this abraham is emotionally drained after all this, Abraham is still wrestling with the parental mind of what am I going to do with my son Lot. After all this, Abraham, he is wrestling with the fact that as a little that I had, I have spent it all. And, and, and not only that, Abraham is living in anxiety and fear because remember he went against the kings of the world. Remember that if all these kings uh, step back, re-strategize, regroup themselves, and he only has 300 men, it is impossible for him to counter that. And as God looks at the heart of Abraham, and as he sees what's running through his mind, as I believe he's looking in your heart this morning, and he understands the situation that you are in, and as I believe he's looking at your condition right now, and he's hearing the prayers that you've been praying for 20 years, and he's understanding the circumstances that you are on, as God in heaven looked down. He saw Abraham. He saw the heart condition of Abraham. Listen to what he says, and this is what he's saying to you this morning, church. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, Do not be afraid. What did I say? Do not be afraid. Abraham, do not be afraid of the kings who are coming after you. Abraham, do not be afraid of the resources that you have. Abraham, do not be afraid of your son, Lot. Abraham, do not be afraid of the situation, the circumstance you are in. Abraham, do not be afraid. But here's the most important thing. Listen to the next word. He says, I am your shield. Your exceedingly great reward. I am your shield. Notice what God did not say. He did not say, I will give you a shield. He said, I am the what? 
That's sure. He says, you see, Abraham, you're very concerned about the soldiers. I am not going to give you the shield to fight against the nation because I am the shield. He looked at Abraham and he said, Abraham, I know you're very so much concerned about the circumstance, the situation of your children. I am not going to give you resources for your children because I am the resources. He looks at Abraham and he says, listen, I know, Abraham, that you are financially broke. I understand that you are emotionally drained. I understand that your marriage is on the verge of collapsing. I understand. But I am not going to send you counselors. I am not going to send you banks. I am not going to send you the Bible. I am not going to send you this situation. I am the solution. God did not say I will send you the shield. He tells Abraham, he, he, he said do not be afraid. I am I don't know what you're going through this morning, but I want you to know that whatever solution you're thinking of is not the answer, but God is the answer. I don't know the pain that you're experiencing in your life, but may I submit to you that painkillers are not the solution, but God is the solution. May I suggest, I don't know what theological debate you're experiencing right now. I don't know what doctrinal challenge that you're facing right now, but may I submit and suggest to you that any doctrine outside God is not a doctrine to hold on. God says to Abraham, I am the shield. You are exceedingly great reward. Listen, church. He did not say, I will send you a reward. What did he say? I am your exceedingly great what? But now here's my question. Was God enough to Abraham? Was God enough to Abraham? Church, answer me, answer me. Was God enough to Abraham? If you're online, those of you listening, watching us, uh, uh, we can't see you, but we believe you answered yes. If God was enough to Abraham, then read me the next verse. Listen to me, verses 2. Then the Bible says this, But Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me? Abraham. God says, I am your exceedingly great reward. And then the next verse, Abraham tells, But Lord God, what will you give me? Wasn't God enough? Wasn't God everything? Wasn't God sufficient? But what is Abraham asking God? What will you give me? How many of you are still asking God, what will you give me? How many of you this morning, God is saying, I, I should be enough. I think I need to be enough. But you see, as a young person, you're believing and saying, until I make that beautiful young lady. Sheesh. And the one and only, the one who was taken for my rib, uh, uh, God is not enough. You see, uh, there's a young man, uh, there's a young woman who's sitting there and saying, ah, the biological clock is ticking. Who told you? Isn't God enough? You see, there's, uh, there's someone who's sitting on and saying, you see, I have children, but they're only, they're only one gender, they're only ladies. If only I can have one. Who told you that that one child will bring happiness in your marriage? Just like Abraham, the question here, God is saying, I am your shield of everything you're going through. In the times of crisis, I am there. In times of your pain, I am the healer. In times of your distress, I am the solution. But Abraham comes right away and says, but God, what will you give me? Is God enough? God has already answered your prayers, but you're still on your knees asking him for other things that he said, don't worry about those. And you're asking, 25 years, Lord? Abraham comes and he says this, and he says, but, but, but Abraham said to Lord, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless? Abraham, is a child more important to you than God? Who gives children, Abraham? You see, he says, and, and the hair of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. My, 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 my fellow members, my, child, my, my fellow Christians, brothers and sisters, even we as Christians, it is very possible to profess that we know God, but we live like the people who do not know God. It is very possible to tell your children that the Lord will provide, but the next minute you turn around and the children they see a distressed parent. And yes, you need to do that. But when it starts creating a distorted picture of God, 
What is it that you're asking from God this morning? What is it that's so valuable to you? See, to Abraham, he was having a child. God was not enough. God was not enough. Many of us, like Abraham, we find ourselves in the very same situation. We pray to God every single day. We profess, claim to be Christians. But you see, here's the danger. Why? How did Abraham get here? You see how Abraham gets here is because he forgets Genesis chapter 12. When God says, I will bless you, I will give you a nation. And my answer me to suggest to you is that the moment you wander from the word of God, you will be assailed with fears and the storms of this world. And may I submit and suggest to you is that the moment you wander from the, 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 the word of God, your financial crisis will be reality. And may I submit and suggest to you and that the moment you wander away from the word of God Genesis chapter 12 was written Abraham had read the word of God he was convicted of the scripture but at this point he had wandered away from the word of God could it be that the problem we face in the world is because we've wandered away from the word of God could it be that the strife we face even in the house of the Lord is because we have wandered away from the word of God could it be that our theology and our doctrines and, 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 and all the messages are not necessarily anchored in the word of God. But it's all about I and me, myself. Could it be that this is what's ailing the world? We're offering solutions that are not anchored in the word of God. Abraham, he forgot who brought him this far. Abraham found himself that God was not enough as a shield. Abraham found himself in a situation and a circumstance that even God was not enough until he has a child he can, God cannot be enough and I pause and I ask you this morning is God enough in your life? Is God enough in your life? Or are there the things that have taken precedence in your life? Like Abraham we fellowship, we worship Come to church, we preach, we sing, we lead. But when rubber meets the road, we find ourselves in a witch doctor. When rubber meets the road, we find ourselves in corruption. When rubber meets the road, we find ourselves backbiting each other. When rubber meets the road, we take matters in our hands. And 25 years later, Abraham is in pain. His marriage is in shambles. His wife is blaming him. He is told to let go of his only son that he had up to that point. Only because he wandered away from the word of God. When I survey the cross... It is not until we come to Genesis chapter 22. And in Genesis chapter 22, I want you to listen to the words that God speaks to Abraham. When finally Abraham comes to this point, and, and, and as you're reading, you're reading the, the Bible, the, the faith of Abraham is, is confirmed. And, and God comes to Abraham and says, uh, uh, verses, uh, Genesis chapter 22, verses 15. And the Bible says, uh, verse, Then the angel of the Lord called in Abraham the second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn to the Lord, because you have done this thing, you have not withheld your son, your honor listen may I submit to you that it came to a point when Abraham finally saw that God was enough and when God said now I need your son the very son that he said what will you give me and now God says now your faith has matured now God is enough if you cannot let go and let God then God is not enough if you cannot let go of your theories, your doctrines, your teachings, and you can let God, then God is not enough. If you cannot let go of your, your pride, your, 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 your unforgiveness, your, your, your character, then God is not enough, my friends. If you cannot sit down and say, I'm simply sorry, then God is not enough. If you cannot get up and acknowledge that I'm human, and I fell short of the glory of God and asked for forgiveness. I have fallen short of the glory of God myself. 
And it is in those moments that I'm reminded that Ezra, I can say that all I want, but this moment here defines that God is not enough in my life. Is God enough in your life? Is God enough in your life? See, start winding up. We have mastered the art of Elkanah. Elkanah has a wife who cannot have a child. And his way of comforting his wife in the book of First Samuel, he can say, but am I enough? Why do you want a child? Mm -mm. Your husband cannot be enough. Your wife cannot be enough. Your finances cannot be enough. It is only in God that all these things find meaning and value. It is only in God that you can assail, you can sing with Jesus in the vessel, I can smile through the storm. It is only in God that your doctrine, your theory, your teaching, your preaching finds its meaning. You see, when you are in God, your test becomes your testimony. You see, when you are in God, your mess becomes your message of hope to a hopeless person. You see, when you are in God, when the running gets deeper, your love, gets, your love for God gets steeper. It is only in God. And not until you come to that place. The question is not if God is enough. The question is, do you believe that God is enough? God is always enough. God is always all-knowing. God is always all-powerful. God is always everything. The problem is not God. The problem is I, Ezra. And this Sabbath morning, God is pleading and appealing with you. He is speaking to us and he's saying, do we have the syndrome of Abraham? Do we have the syndrome of praying and trusting to God until a certain point of life? Then we take matters in our hands. You see, knowing God is more than just reading the word of God. Knowing God is coming to the space and the place like Fanny Crosby, the hymn writer who wrote so many songs that we sing. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Praise him, praise him. Burdens that lifted us, burdens that lifted at Calvary. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Fanny Crosby writes these songs. But you see, she was born with her sight. But as, 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 as a young child, she developed a condition in her life. She ended up losing her eyesight because of, long, uh, because of uh, 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 wrong medication that was given to her by a nurse. As she grew up, she started writing poems. And one day, a minister of the Lord came to her and said, Isn't it amazing that God gave you all these gifts, but he denied you the gift of eyesight? Then her response to her was, Do you know that if at birth, I had been able to make a petition. It would have been that I was to be born blind. When asked why she would say this, her reply was, Because when I get to heaven, my first face that shall ever gladden my sight will be none other other than that of my Savior. How is it as a blind woman, she does not sit down in her blindness, but she sees Christ through her blindness. How can you, as a child of God, in your pain, you can see Christ through your pain? How is it in your circumstance, as a child of God, what will it take for you to say, God, you are my shield. God, you are my exceedingly great reward. God, I don't need anything else. Take this world, but give me the name of Jesus. What will it take for you to say, God, I'd rather lose everything. I'd rather lose silver and gold, but still have my Lord, my God. I don't know if this is your prayer this morning. See, there is 2005, 2013. Get a service call to go preach in South Africa. Super excited. Young man, super excited. Leave preaching one place, get to another place, pay me, pay for my flight, everything. I come at night, I'm packing my clothes, but at the back of my mind, I'm thinking, hey, once I get to the airport, I need to take that selfie. Hmm. I need to post off to Joburg to preach the gospel. Christ is coming soon. Packed my luggages, I'm excited. Took my first flight. We get to Chicago, the airport with my other friend, Rodney. 
as we're getting ready, his flight is about to leave. Rodney says, hey, Ezra, man, I cannot unpack my, pack, uh, my, my luggages. Can I take you as, since your flight is two hours later? I say, sure. I'll see you, Joba. God bless you. Travel safe. As the bells boss his plane, I bought my plane and I'm super excited. I land in London. Something tells me, Ezra, you have never been to London. Why don't you just go out? Go out and visit. Little did I know, I was sitting in the custody of, of immigration, waiting for my next flight back to the U.S. And I'm sitting there, I'm saying, Lord, I was the main speaker, and Rodney was one that as a young person said, I'm going to train this young person. You see, the Lord knew my heart was not right. The Lord knew that there was nothing to do with the gospel in this. And the Lord knew that I was not ready for any of this. So I got into the next flight. The very same flight that brought me to London picked me back with the same flight attendants. Can you imagine the shame of walking back to the flight? You are seated back there. How are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> so far, God is good. But you see, Ronnie lands in Joburg. He takes his luggage, he is taller than me. My pants cannot fit him. My trousers cannot fit him. He has a size, I don't know what size of shoes. My shoes cannot fit him. And now he has to preach. He has never stood in front of people to preach. And Rodney is here now. He said, oh, Ezra cannot make it. Now you have to preach. And Rodney just bows down and says, Lord, take it over. The next news we hear from Zobag is that an entire Sunday church has converted to Adventism. You see, the Lord was enough for Rodney. For me, the trips were the thing. My friends, God wants to finish the work. He's not so much interested in the work. He's interested with you. Because when he wins you, just by beholding, many will come to Christ. When people see you in the midst of the storm, their prayer will be, may their God be my God. When they experience you calm in the midst of, of all the, the, the commotion that is going on, you give hope to the hopeless. Is God enough? It is my prayer this morning. But whatever you do, wherever you go, here's why God should be enough as I finish. Number one, God is enough because it was at the cross when the Father and the Son were the Son was separated. As Lord had been separated from his earthly father Abraham and as Jesus is hanging at the cross and the thought crosses his mind that because of you and I he will never see his father again. There is a possibility. He cries and says my father, my father, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, my father. My father, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus could not see a life beyond him and his father. And because his father was everything, it is at the cross when he was separated that he took his last breath. See, yes, Jesus died because of, your, of our sins. But the truth of the matter is, it is when he was separated from his father that he gave up his spirit. When God is enough, you cannot live outside him. You cannot exist in your own ways. You cannot make decisions as you please. When Jesus was separated from the Father, he gave up his Holy Ghost because his Father was everything. Is there anyone this morning who wants to say, I know I have an idea. But I know there are things in my heart that I have not fully surrendered. Therefore, God is not enough to me. I know I proclaim. I know I try to practice. But there is something in my life that is more precious than my God. He is enough in every aspect. Except in this one area. And you want to say, Lord, I want to give my all to you. If this is your desire, I'd like to invite you to stand. I'd like you to invite you to stand. Not to stand because I'm inviting you to stand. But I want you to say, Lord, I want to 
you to be all and all in my life. That if I'm separated from you, just like God, Jesus, I cannot see beyond the cross. Is there anyone? As the choristers, leaders in this song. By my faith, 523, song number 523. My faith has found a resting place. In your circumstances, has your faith found a resting place in the Lord? Song 523. My faith has found resting place. As we sing this song, I want you to meditate and make this a prayer for you. And say, Lord, my faith has found a resting place. Let's rise up. <laughs> Together. saves them and my fear and doubt a sinful soul I come to him he will not cast me out I need no other evidence I need no other plea it is the The lost he came to save For me his precious blood he shed For me his life he gave I need no other evidence I need no other plea And rose again for me. What other evidence do you need? What other thing can God do to for, do for you or to you for you to believe that is enough? What other thing? Is your faith enough to say that if I was to sleep today, I know my name is written in the books of life. Are you sure? Or are you sitting? Is God? Father God, it is very possible for us to say you are enough. Yet everything else reveals otherwise. It is very possible to be comfortable in our preaching, in our teaching, in our singing. It is very possible for us to be comfortable in our accounts. Very possible for us to be comfortable 
in our call to service. Yet, we find the accounts of people like Judas, who served three and a half years, sat at the feet of Jesus, whose names, I believe, I'm not sure, might not be found in the book of life. It is very possible, Lord, that somebody who's listening to us, following us through social media, Facebook, YouTube, KCB, wherever, you, you have given up hope on God, you have tried Him, and you feel like He's not there. God you are everything and all it is my prayer that you will descend the hearts of your children that you will speak to every single person that you will meet every person at their points of need that if there is an area in their life where they have not fully submitted surrendered to you Lord you may convict guide and lead them Lord, for those who have hardened our hearts, you may be patient with us. For those of us, Lord, who are questioning the very existence of God, reveal yourself to us. It is my prayer, my plea, my ask, that when all is said and done, our response unanimously will be together with that of those our forefathers, the martyrs of the old, that we will say if our master was crucified with his head up, I want to be crucified with my head upside down because in him I find my worth in living. That I will join my hands with Stephen and say even if it means to stone me, it is enough for me to be stoned for the name of Jesus Christ. That we join my hands with John the Revelator and say it is not enough to throw me in the burning oil, throw me to the island of Patmos, but I will still not denounce the name of my God. It will be enough for me to say yes, like Job I may lose everything, but my all and all is found in Christ. God, please be our all. This is our prayer. This is our ask. We trust you've answered it in accordance to your will. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many have been blessed? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we wish to thank God for giving us the privilege to worship him today. And we thank him for allowing us to worship today. We trust our, our being here has been acceptable in the eyes of the Lord. I will wish to thank the preacher Pastor Ezra for accepting to be used by the Lord today and other groups of people, powerful team that uh, is making sure that this message is relayed not just here in Kenya but all over the world and more so I thank the floor managers and the crew from KBC and the church for the good work that they are doing not forgetting the powerful choristers led by our shepherdess here and the rest and uh, the pianist and the sign language and not forgetting you yourselves for coming to worship together with us may God bless you our other, our other church outside this church that's the virtual church we also thank you for tuning in uh, before we wind up I have two announcements to make uh, that will affect you and me in one way or another now for this afternoon we might not be having our normal programs in church but we'll use the privilege to be together as families this afternoon. For those who are visiting, also use this advantage to visit uh, your people, either in hospitals or at home, and pray with them, please. We also want to inform the elders who are around here, who managed to be here, that we'll be having a small, short meeting in pastor's office immediately after the choristers have finished singing. Uh, for those who were baptized last Sabbath, I don't know how many are here, 
and for those probably who are watching us who didn't come here, we wish to announce that your certificates are ready and we'll be having a welcoming ceremony to receive you officially next Sabbath. So make a point of coming and if you don't, please make sure that somebody picks for you the certificate. They are already ready. Thank you. I think the choristers will continue singing two songs and then they will lead us in the grace as we wind up. Thank you and may God bless you. Amen. Praise God, church. We thank the servant of God for the wonderful message. Is God enough? That should be our question, even as we continue with our Sabbath worship this morning. We are going to finish our session for this morning with the three hymns. We'll start with, To God Be the Glory, for the great things he has done. Still in line with our theme, Is God Really Enough for Us? To God Be the Glory is song number three. 41 in our SDA hymnals 341 to God be the glory for the great things he has done together to Through Jesus the Son And give Him the glory Great things we have done O power of faith, redemption The purchase of God To every believer The promise of God Offender who truly believes the spoken from Jesus, the pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. All come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He hath done. Great things He hath taught us, great things He hath done. And greater rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but pure and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus will save. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. All come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things we have done. Amen. Amen. 520, he hideth my soul. A wonderful savior is Jesus, my Lord. 520 in our SDA hymnals. As we ponder over, is God enough for us? 520. 
wonderful savior is Jesus my Lord together legalize weed. Professor George Luchiri Wajakoya of the Roots Party. <laughs> Raila Amolo Odinga of the Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Party. <laughs> David Mwaure Wahiga of the Agano Party. And <laughs> William Samoye Ruto of the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance. Presidential Debate 2022. Do not adjust your sets. so good tunakushukuru sana ewe mpinzi wa kipindi cha bridge over congo na kbc channel 1 kwa ujumla kwa hiyo mpinzi wa rumba mpenzi wa muziki ya afrika kipindi kipendacho cha bridge over congo kitakuwa kinakuja kila siku ya jumamosi kuanzia saa moja na nusu ya jioni hadi saa mbili na nusu ya jioni majira ya afrika mashariki nzo kwa lemba kanina na yeti yani dovu hachoshwi kamwe na pembe zake make a date this sato utanipata mimi le grand polygamista simion mfumo kimbangu na wini marie jose ambapo toko tunafanya fimbo fimbo chapa mwa Generation ni inakuja ni sisi tuna lead inchi. Justina Wangui wa Mae, Root Party of Kenya. Ukiitwa deputy itika. Martha Wangari Karua, Azimio la Umoja One Kenya Coalition Party. Ungetaka tuseme wa Kenya wameamua. Rigadi Gashagwa, UDA. We are coming to bring in change. Ruth Wambui Musheru, Agano Party. Battle of the Deputies, the Deputy Presidential Debate live on the 19th July 2022, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Beatrice Chetkovic, the fastest woman in the world, becomes the world champion here in Doha. The World Athletics Championships is being hosted in Oregon, in the United States of America, for the first time ever from 15th to 24th of July 2022. An estimated 2,000 base track and field athletes representing more than 200 nations will come together in a celebration of diversity, human potential and athletic achievement. Short races are not the only attraction Marathon, magnificent throws. Is it going to be long enough? Oh, it's a huge, huge throw. 
spend outstanding jumps among other disciplines is expected as well. Although an immense task awaits them, our own Team Kenya is adequately represented by resolute athletes ready to liven up Hayward Field at the University of Oregon. What a race! What heart! Oh my goodness me! So, so close! Don't miss a single glorious moment live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1. KBC Channel 1, your true sports partner. Yeah. Under my feet, to my knee, I'm going to 